with silver arm and silver pool, and hammer to forge worms doom. Dragons hid these mighty tools. The last true pool lies in this room. The arm is lost to unknown fate. The hammer lies past dwarven. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about the Dragonlances. <laughs> I'd like to take a moment and thank my collaborator patrons, the Heroes of the Lance, and invite you to consider becoming a patron or member of this channel by visiting the links in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate link. Now I'm referencing DL7 Dragons of Light and every Dungeons and Dragons edition Dragonlance campaign sourcebook for this information. They are the namesake of the campaign, and yet they don't appear until DL7 Dragons of Light in 1985, a full 16 months after the first Dragonlance product, DL1 Dragons of Despair. Before the War of the Lance modules were released, Tracy Hickman had spent countless hours building out a backstory for this world. He created mythic heroes and gods, creation myths and artifacts of legend. Originally referred to by the evil dragons as the Lances of Doom, and by its wielders as the Spear of Paladine or Great Lance, the Dragon Lances were one such artifact that became integral in the defeat of Tachesis and her armies in the Third Dragon War, the War of the Lance, and finally, in the War of Souls. And though the purpose of the Dragonlance was to defeat the Queen of Darkness, you cannot tell the story of the Dragonlances without starting from the beginning with Huma and the Silver Dragon Heart. Now, there are many versions of Huma's story. What follows is the original abbreviated legend. In the Age of Dreams, the Third Dragon War lasted nearly 300 years, Near the end of that time, a young knight of Salamnia named Huma Dragonbane of Eldor undertook a quest to aid the people of Kryn. He soon realized that he could not stop the devastation of the dragons, so he prayed to Paladine, who sent a white stag before Huma during one of his hunts. Huma was overcome by the majesty of this creature. Even though he was exhausted and hungry, he could not bring himself to destroy it. Instead, he followed the stag, which ultimately led him into a quiet grove. Therein, Huma met a beautiful woman named Gwyneth, who eased his pain. He fell in love with her, and she with him, though she refused his pledges of loyalty for months. They rejoiced in their love until the woman revealed her true form to Huma, that of a silver dragon. She loved Huma too much to continue to lie to him, Rather than rejecting her for her deception, he accepted her in his love. She prayed to Paladine to grant her the woman's form forever, willingly giving up her magic and long lifespan of a dragon to live in the world with Huma. Now, Paladine said he would grant her wish if they could accept the future that the request would create. The future of the Queen of Darkness and her dragons taking control of the world and forcing innocents into misery and destruction. However, if she would remain a dragon, Paladine could lead Huma to the Dragon Lances, and together they could defeat the Queen of Darkness. Huma told her that he was willing to give everything up for her, but as he was saying this, she saw the light in his eyes die, and rather than selfishly rejoice in their love, thereby condemning the world to darkness, she refused and bid farewell to Huma, giving up her love for the sake of the world. Huma was sent on three trials to prove his worthiness, and eventually was brought to Duncan Ironweaver, a master smith, armorer, and student of Reorks himself, who crafted the original dragon lances with the Hammer of Honor. He returned to the Silver Dragon Heart, and together they faced off against the Queen of Darkness' aspect, defeating her and banishing her and her dragons from Kryn. By the time the heroes of the Lance were led into Foghaven Vale in southern Ergoth and entered the Stow Dragon Mountain with Silvara in the Age of Despair, there were only twenty Dragon Lances left in existence, ten mounted and ten footmans. 
but the companions had Silvara to teach them how to build them. With Theros Ironfield wielding the silver arm of Ergoth and the dragon metal to forge them with, they found their chance to fight the near invulnerable Queen's Dragons. Without the Hammer of Karis, you can still forge dragon lances. They're simply known as lesser dragon lances and are inferior, degrading more rapidly than their pure, greater, or true dragon lance counterparts. Crudely referred to as heavy spears, dragon lances are more appropriately described as elegant needles of silver and steel. Both varieties of dragon lances give off a healthy silver glow. Their heads are sharpened to a fine edge, and small barbs protrude from their sides. The footman's dragon lance is eight feet long and used in all respects as a typical polearm or spear when used against any creature save a dragon. Against a dragon, however, it becomes a deadly artifact. The mounted dragon lance is 16 feet long, much heavier than the footman's version, and affixed with a shield guard in front that can absorb magic. It also acts as a typical lance against non-dragon foes. They will burn the hand or mount of any non-good characters wielding them. True dragon lances must be forged with both the Hammer of Karas and the Silver Arm of Ergoth with dragon metal, but also overseen by the Master of the White Robes and the Chosen Prophet of Paladine in the Night of the Grand Conjunction of the Moons. When the Molten Dragon Metal solidifies, the Master of the White Robes imbues it with awesome spell power, and the Chosen Prophet evokes Paladine. If the workmanship is worthy and the lance is truly needed, Paladine will appear as his avatar form and lay his hands on the white-hot metal. He will then instantly disappear in a flash of vivid white light, and the true Dragonlance will remain. True Dragonlances draw on the power and essence of the dragon and the rider wielding it. If the individual wielding the lance does not believe in its powers, it may actually shatter under its lack of confidence. It can unleash the dragon's breath weapon at double its usual range and damage through the utterance of the command word by the rider. The use of this immense power drains the life force of the dragon, so it should be used sparingly. If used to excess and the life of the dragon is lost, the rider will be hunted down by the master of the white robes and the chosen prophet of Paladine and slain. Now, in the Chaos War, the dragon lances would be used against the Knights of Tachesis, Chaos Spawn, and Fire Dragons. This led to the Age of Mortals, where the Heroes of the Heart quested after Huma Dragon Bane's dragon lance in order to fight off the evil dragon overlord Malastrix. And finally, perhaps in true poetic fashion, the secret to the creation of the dragon lance was given by Paladine to Huma to defeat the Dark Queen, and to come full circle with the Dragonlance at the end of the War of Souls, it was Paladine who sacrificed his immortality, which in turn made Tachesis mortal, allowing the young Speaker of the Stars, Sylvanoche Caledon, to wield a broken Dragonlance, throwing it at the Dark Queen, which killed her instantly. Now, it may have taken nearly 1,500 years, but the laws of balance were finally restored, and the purpose of the Dragonlance was finally fulfilled. And that is all I have to say about the Dragonlances. Do you have a favorite version of the Dragonlance? Have you ever used them in your campaigns? With the Dragonlance's purpose met, should they remain on Kryn? And finally, which tale of Huma Dragonbane do you prefer? Leave a comment below. I'd like to once again invite you to consider becoming a patron or member of this channel, and you can pick up Dragonlance Gaming materials using my affiliate link, all of which are in the description below. This channel is all about celebrating the wonderful world of the Dragonlance Saga, and I hope you'll join me in the celebration. Thank you for watching, this has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, when dragons make war, Kryn can only tremble in the shadow of angry wings.